I just need to find this. Now, I've got a problem, of course, that I'll have to solve, and I'll solve it off camera, but I'll tell you guys what the problem is. My 4-cell uh, 1,000 milliamp hour batteries that I want to run in parallel, and I'm running them in parallel uh, for two reasons. One is I want a little bit more power, or sorry, a little more time, but I also I'm going to require more. These guys are Twenty to thirty C, and this motor uh, at, at its maximum is going to draw somewhere between fifty and sixty amps, or it could draw up to sixty. I think fifty-five is the maximum for it. So if I run one of these batteries and I run it full out off of this sixty amp ESC, chances are pretty good it's going to get puffy in short order. Um, if I run two of them in parallel, however, then it's going to to act more like a Instead of a 20 to 30 C, it's going to act more like a 40 to 60 C battery, a single 40 to 60, which will be plenty to uh, to get me where I need to go. So that's why I got to run these in parallel. But you see, they come with these funky connectors, these funky little red boys, and I need my ESC is the Hobby King uh, XT60 connector. So either I need to convert these two to XT60s. Or I need to convert this one to this, or I need a parallel adapter that'll go from one to the other. That's the most likely route I'll go. I'll probably do uh, two of these into one parallel adapter that, that'll uh, that'll hook in there. It'll all work. Um, so I could, in theory, mount this guy right now, and he'll be mounted this way, so that the battery connectors. We'll hook up like so. Just gonna get these out of the way. These are going to go to the receiver. So I always find this kind of awkward. The heat sinks on the top, and it's the nice flat part that would actually stick to the foam. And then you got all this junk on the bottom, which are the parts that won't stick as nicely. You want to expose that heat sink because you want uh, as much cooling as you can. But the nicest way to mount it is flat down. So it's always a little bit of a conundrum. Now these wires here would probably be nicer if I had removed a little piece of uh, this foam here and let them lie flat. And then these, this is going to go up to the batteries which will come out of here. So all in all, that's going to be all right. So should I try? Let's see, what do we have in the tickle trunk? We have some double-sided foam. That might work. Now that's going to, the double-sided foam's got some thickness to it. So it's going to end up popping that ESC up to the top. But what I'm hoping is the some of the give in the foam and the components on the bottom, maybe it'll make for a, a decent connection there. And I'm going to mount that right there. I don't need to have these motor wires hooked up while I'm doing this. So, let's see. I'm going to say it's about that. Let's see about that. I'm going to try doing it the right way, and when it doesn't stick, and it probably won't, look see, look at that, that's just not going to work. I would love to know what people do to get around this kind of problem. I don't even know what the components are on the other side of this thing, I could be crushing them right now. I could put, again, I mean, tape is the answer to everything, some tape over it so it doesn't go flying out. Maybe for this one plane, I'll do something like that. So as long as those reach, that's good. Those are going to reach there, that's good. These guys are going to hook in here and here. This guy is going to hook in here. Okay, so... 
what we'll do is I can't remember, uh, this is a four channel Hobby King receiver. Uh, it's usually used for uh, remote control cars. Um, for the range that I'm going to fly this guy, I don't plan on flying him FPV anytime soon. Uh, this would be fine. I could also use the six channel Hobby King. I've got some FR Sky um, receivers and transmitters as well. I've got some DSM2 and I've got a 433 megahertz that I use for my FPV. But for this, I think just having that, just having that nestled in right there would be perfect. So I'm going to mount this little Hobby, Hobby King receiver. I should test out first. Um, everything. I'm going to turn the cameras off for a minute or two. Here, you guys don't need to be seeing that in front of the cameras. And figure out which channel is one, two, and three on this receiver. And when I come back, I will, will I'll mention it, which one is which. And mount that guy in there. And I'm not going to walk you guys through uh, soldering these. Um, that's it's not all that important. And after that, this guy is going to be ready to fly. I need to have a way to attach my batteries. Oh, there's my there's my sign. Uh, my one camera just uh, ran out of battery, so I'm going to turn these guys off. I'm going to do a little bit more organizing and uh, come back for the final stage and then uh, after the final stage all that's going to be left to do is fly this guy. Okay, we're back again and I figured out which channels are which. Uh, one and two are the ailerons and number three is the throttle. So here we are and these are labeled on here. I'm, I can. Uh, Hold it up so you can see what's one, two, and three, maybe. I've given up on the other two cameras for the moment, so we're just going to use the overhead view. Um, I've already put in the uh, ailerons and throttle. Now, I don't notice I don't have a prop on this yet. It's very important that putting the prop on is pretty much the last thing you're going to do. So you don't want to have an accident while you're building. So I've hooked that up. I need to bind need to bind. So I have my bind plug here and for these guys the bind plug goes I know it says it goes in the third channel but I don't believe it for a second. So I'm going to put it in the fourth channel and of course I could be totally wrong. Um, let me see. I'm going to apply Hold down the bind button, make sure that's off, make sure all these guys' switches are in the right spots. There's a bind button on the back here. Hold down, turn that on. Turn that on in bind mode. And I see it's flashing. So I'm going to try this again where I turn it off, hold it down, turn it on. Does it change its mind? No. What do you think that means? It means it didn't bind. So, maybe channel 3 really is bind on this. And in that case, if channel 3 is bind, it seems to want a voltage. I'm going to just, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to apply the voltage through my BEC to where it says to apply the volt voltage. The bind is, is where it says to bind. So there we go. Now it's in binding mode. I hold down the bind button on the back. There we go. You see it went to red. So what do you know? It was labeled correctly after all. Now I unplug my power. Turn off my receiver. Take that guy out. And I'm going to hook my throttle back up here to channel 3 where I had it before. Now, before I apply power there again, I just want to make sure that I have this set to my wing model. 
And it says turn G power systems wing. Okay, good. Put my throttle all the way down. And, and now I'm going to power this up. Seemed to like that. Seemed to like it a lot. Now I'll try the throttle. Whoa, as you can see, I don't have this on very well. So let me just throw that there. It sounds nice, but this is not a uh, heavy duty. This is a 3S battery, so I don't want to run it too long. So now I'm going to do a uh, couple control surface tests. I'm going to pull back. Look at that. And see, this is where so I, I pull back on the control. Both of the elevons come up, and that will send the plane upwards. And that's exactly what you want. And this is where uh, I was saying that I'm careful about... It's still wet. I'm careful about which way I put in my servos to be the same as my other planes because I just have one wing setting here and it's, I know it's going to be correct. So now I try a right, uh, right turn and this one comes down, the other one comes up and what that ends up doing is that ends up pushing that end of the plane like this. The one that goes down, the wind comes underneath, pushes it that way. The one that comes up here, the wind comes underneath, pushes it that way. The plane banks left. Now I try the other way. Or sorry, banks right. The other way and the plane will bank to the right. So we have full control. Wow. I got in motors in my shop that don't make that much noise. That's awesome. That's awesome. I am ready to basically mount the last couple pieces on here. And after a little bit of soldering, this guy'd be ready to fly. It is too windy out today to fly it, but I'm quite happy, quite happy indeed. So, uh, for mounting this on here, uh, you might notice that I cut a little slit right here for the antenna. I'm going to mount the antenna across like this. Uh, this is how I like to do them. Some people will mount their antennas straight up and down, and then when they fly, they'll fly with the receiver like this. The idea is to have, well, that's going to be really tough to see from that, uh, that angle, but the idea is to not have them intersecting here like this, right? Then you have a very, very basically what amounts to a small area of intersection, and you you don't get as much range. If they if if they're parallel to each other, you're going to get good range. So I like to fly with my antenna like that, and like this, and that way, you see, the plane's going away from you. You get lots of range. The plane's coming back to you. Get lots of range. The one time that you don't get lots of range is when you're in a strong bank. Um, but uh, what can you do with a with these types of antennas there's always going to be an occasion where you're not going to get lots of range luckily with a small plane like this uh, I really can't fly at line of sight all that far away from me anyway it's not going to be much of an issue okay so let's attach the receiver again I used my 3M double-sided carpet tape for this. Mix it on nicely. Backing off. and sturdy. Now I might, I'll probably end up putting a dab of hot glue or something here just to hold that steady. Um, I'm not going to do it just yet. I could also, if I wanted to, I could cover it with a little bit of packing tape. It's not going to cause too much of a problem. Um, there are certain types of tape that have magnetic uh, uh, metal filings. I shouldn't say magnetic, but metal filings, um, very, very fine particles in the tape itself. And it will cause a problem with reception. So I prefer to just use a couple dabs of hot glue up there. That's what I'll end up doing. So at this point, other than putting on the prop, I'm pretty much done. Pretty much done. Um, all I need to do is put on the prop and wire up a parallel harness. 
for my two batteries that I'm going to use. I could, if I really wanted to, just mount this battery on here, hook that up and take it for a, take it for a maiden flight. I, it'd be ready in the next 15 or 20 minutes uh, to do that.